and bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy. Come on, come on. I didn't say bless me. I said bless the name of the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together because he's worthy of all the praise. You may have your seats. Truly we thank God, amen, for another Sunday, another time of worship, another time of prayer, another time of praise. You're not going to realize how important this is until you can't do it. And many a times, I think because things are the way they are, you know, routinely, we take stuff for granted. You know, I'm reminded of a story in the Bible where this young man had so much power during that time and during the Bible time, he was the only man that the Spirit of the Lord would come upon. And he used it and used it. And I think he took it for granted because when he shook himself one time, it didn't come. <laughs> and when the power of God didn't come, they put him in adverse situations and humbled him down until it came back. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is while you have an opportunity, while you could praise God when you're not coerced, when you have a real reason to praise him, that's when you should praise him. Because you don't want adverse circumstances coming to humble you down to make you praise him when praise is coming for the upright. Amen. I'm so thankful this morning, so glad that we're here. We certainly honor God and Jesus Christ, our secure. He secured our salvation. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And to the Holy Ghost, the babysitter, the paraclete that always reminds us of what God has said to us. Think about this. If the Holy Ghost didn't remind us from time to time, Satan would rip us off of our blessings. There are a lot of times the Holy Ghost got to remind you what God told you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> He's got to remind that. Now, wait a minute now. Uh, don't you remember God said he was going to bless you? And then you kind of like, oh, yeah, that's right. God, God did say he was going to bless me. So we thank God for the Holy Ghost. He's to bring back all things to our remembrance, whatsoever he said to us. Amen. To our clergy on today and to the absence of those others. Amen. That are not here. To the men, the priests of God. Amen. To our Levites, the praise worshipers. Amen. The, 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 the quality sound of the temple. Amen. The Levites. Amen. And to district missionary. God bless you on today. To all the missionaries, saints, and friends. God bless you. And a welcome and a warm happy Father's Day. Amen. Today is a day to where every father should be recognized. Amen. And then a day is the day for every father to rehearse in his life and wherever things are lacking, make sure you fix that. Amen. Because being a father is more than being a dad. Uh, I don't want to get too far into that. But even the Bible God himself left on record how valuable fathers are. 
he says, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet not many fathers. So there's a lot of folks can preach and say and live and do, but he puts emphasis on a real father. And the father cares about his children. Amen. Now to be a battle between the mother and the father who loves the children the most, I will, I will concede that the mother does. And you know why I can concede the mother does? Because as a father, I understand both roles. And a man never will. Never will. Never will. Love children like a father do. Because it's something about that pregnancy, that bond, that never goes away. And if you know your Bible, the Bible says that you will be saved through childbearing. I don't have time to get into that. But it's scientifically proof that every child a mother births, their DNA and antibodies remain in that mother for the rest of her life. So it's too deep for me to get into it right now. But trust me, that only happens to a mother. It don't happen to a father. So that's why you have to concede to facts and the truth. Amen. So we're so thankful this morning. Today's Health Sunday. Amen. And, and I think if there's ever been a time, if there's ever been a time, now is the time to get very serious about our health. They cease to amaze me, the scientific world, of all the things that they're coming up with now that's against our health that we take for granted. And these last two and a half years, COVID-19 has not only revealed some very dangerous norms, but it has also revealed how far off we are from good health. Because most, most people who get the COVID virus don't just sneeze and sweat and go in a room for 10 days and come back out. Some people's organs are affected in such a great way until they are on the transplant list. And we can thank God that that's not you or me. And it's not to say that it shouldn't have been you or it shouldn't have been me, but for the grace of God, so go I. So I'm saying all that to say while God is still shielding and protecting us, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to cooperate with God. There are certain things God put on the earth and in our lives to keep us in cooperation with him so we could have optimum health. Uh, I know I don't have a lot of folks believe that, but it's true. All you have to do is look at your facts. And your facts will tell you, especially if you eat enough vegetables, that's half the battle there. Even if you walk. See, I done got past now asking y'all to run. You know, the only running we get is in 15 seconds we shout, and then when we stop shouting, we're so far out of breath. That's the only running we're going to do for some of us. But it's a proven medical fact. If you just walk, your brain lights up. And the more your brain lights up, the more neurons connect. And neurologically, your mind is sharper. 
And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because Alzheimer's is not going nowhere. And it's on the rise. And can I say this? Don't tell nobody this secret now. Stop taping real quick because I don't want nobody else to know this secret. It's very high among blacks. So that's all, that's all I want you to know. We are the most affected race on the planet. And it has a lot to do with our diet and our sedentary lifestyle. And before we get to Alzheimer's, we got to start dealing with our mental health. There are mental health problems we have in the black community that a lot of communities don't have. And the first number one prioritized magnanimous reason is because we pretend like it don't exist. The only reason why most people who break their legs or their fingers or their arms can't pretend like that don't exist, it hurt too bad. And if you, God help you if you see the bone coming through the skin. Not only are you going to throw up and pass out. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. See, mental health is different. It shows up in subtle ways. And I'm going to be honest with you now, and I want you to just pray for me if I'm wrong. Most people who experience mental health within themselves see it first. But they get apprehensive and afraid because they're going to think others think something's wrong when you know there's something wrong. So I want this morning to start out with five ways to improve your mental health. The Mayo Clinic is an organization I partner with, and they are working feverishly to get the word out, especially to the black community. Uh, some of you all, I, I, I made an announcement last week, something that, the, something that the Mayo Clinic don't do, and that is allow anybody to walk up and be a patient at the hospital. Uh, they're on a different level, and they do things differently. But they're now having workshops. I took, I took some of the brothers to a prostate workshop. And they said, if you all would allow us, if something happens, contact us. We'll put you in the hands of the best doctors, and we'll even try to help. Mayo Clinic don't do that. <laughs> they have rich donors and folks with money that can go to, I had a friend that had a problem and I called one of my doctor friends and when they asked me what kind of insurance they had, they said, Wes, I hate to say this, but they won't touch him. But isn't it something? These things are happening so rapidly now, they're kind of changing their stance. They're trying to help now. So the Mayo Clinic and, 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 and the partners that we have, the Bama Gilead, are trying to stave off a lot of problems we have because we're in a learned generation now. I'm going to say this, and I don't mean no harm. We can act as though there's nothing wrong, but folks right now, because they read and see stuff, can, can tell by interacting with you something wrong. You may not say nothing, but, you know, we, we see signs now. And there's no different than driving. You have to pay attention to the signs. Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Mental health is vital to every stage of life. Mental health is vital to every stage of life. I submit to you, people with mental health have a hard time living saved. God is a healer. And God speaks to us. But if you hear voices too much, it affects how you react to the Bible 
and what's being taught. Because mental health affects every stage of your life. From childhood and adolescence to adulthood. Our mental health determines how we cope with different stressors in life. Now, people don't want to believe that, but according to your mental capability, dictates how you respond to stress. Some people, from a child, never have got a handle on the way they respond, so that's why people lash out and ready to fight and cuss. Every time something goes just a little bit further than what they want. See, I'm not getting too many amens right there. But you learn coping skills when you're young. And then if we're not learned enough how to curtail some of these things, then it happens in adolescence and it happens in adulthood. And then before you know it, sometimes the way we are programmed causes us to stay the way we are. And then when you add the chemical imbalance, then there's got to be some more measures taken for someone other than you or me to get you back to normal. It's just the way it is. It doesn't mean some, that, that, some, that, you know, that you're just so bad and nothing could happen. Yes, and I believe God can heal. Oh, I've seen him do it, y'all. But guess what? He wouldn't have gave doctors a revelation on how to deal with what's going on with you. That's why they're in place. To help us. Our mental health deals with the way we cope with stress. It even deals with how we make choices. People who have mental health problems don't make good choices. You know, we blame it on, you know, I can do what I want to do. But sometimes that's really about the top shelf of your capacity. And you just don't want to admit it. And then we wonder why we're always in the same type of scenario. That shows there is an inability to make a better choice. And then sometimes mental health shows up the way we relate to others. Now, I don't know how else to put this, but the way I'm going to say this. Whew. Something has to be wrong with someone when they're always wanting to hurt somebody else. <laughs> Something is wrong with a person mentally when their aim is always to hurt somebody else. I'm not talking about shooting and fighting. I'm just talking about just stuff that you know that you conjure up and cook and put on display. Th these are issues that we got to deal with, y'all. And perhaps there may be some mental health stressors there. So what do we do? One of the ways we do that is we get social. A great way to relieve stress and stimulate brain activity is to socialize with friends and family. Now, I know, I know, it's okay. It's not a sin. But guess what? Sometimes it means something. When you can get with other folks and be yourself and make sure you're balanced. See, when you stay, listen, when you stay to yourself, Talk to yourself. Answer yourself. <laughs> and then everything has to be the way you thought it, talked, and came about it. 
something might be wrong. Listen, it's nothing wrong going to dinner and talking the way you talk and letting other folks hear you. Sometimes that could be a lifesaver. It's called an echo chamber. You hear how that sounds right now, echoing? See, when you're in an echo chamber, all you hear is what's coming back from what you say. Rather than what normal people say. See, it's not normal for you to stay to yourself and only like your stuff and only want your stuff and can't do nothing with nobody else because your stuff is so important that everybody got to stop doing what they're doing to make sure your stuff it's a problem. It's a problem. So lock on the bright side. Positive thinking is an optim optimistic approach to focusing on the good in any situation, leaving you healthier mentally, physically, and spiritually. Y'all, if this is not truth, I'm not a black man. We have to stop all this negative thinking about everything. Now, you know, me and Sister Rev how have our philosophical de debates because I testify about them a lot. We had one this morning. And I was looking at something. And I said, Sister Rev, you know what's really strange? And I said, I don't think enough people see this. But if you could really understand God, I see what God has done throughout time. Even though it's been traumatic and bad and hurtful to a lot of people. But some of the stuff God did on purpose, I said, because there's black people all over the planet instead of just in one place. Now, some of the experiences was bad, but had God not done that, they wouldn't be in the Netherlands. Brazil, that has just been in Africa, right? And she said, however, there's a flip side. And you got to look at it this way. I said, yeah, that's true too. Now suppose I was stuck in my way. And I didn't agree. And I didn't agree just because it made sense because she said it. Come on, y'all know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, we have to learn to balance our ideas and our thoughts with other folks. Because I'm going to be honest with you, if you can't balance what you think and balance with other folks without getting so angry because it ain't what you, what, the way you want it, that could be a sign. of us slipping into darkness. Yeah. You got to have balance. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. Some of us need, some of us need to deal with other people other than our family and other folks at the church. Because you need to know how other people think and live so you can balance yourself. Everything is not the devil. Because as my son would say, life just happens. There are some things in life that just life. It's just the way it is. And you got to have enough mental capacity to understand it and deal with it. All right. All, right. All right, I'm going to get too deep into that. And, and another way is rest. People don't believe this, but rest is very important on your mental health. <laughs> rest is necessary for mental health maintenance. Also, rest improves concentration and memory. It promotes a healthier immune system, improves mood, and boosts metabolism. Metabolism. If I ask you right now something about sleep, I guarantee you maybe 
two in every five might know the answer. If I ask you right now, what is ram sleep? Rim, ram, whatever. What sleep is it? Deep sleep? Okay, I'm getting so many answers. And why is it a second stage? Why are there four stages? Oh, okay. See, the average person thinks they just go to sleep and wake up. You know, do you know why you can't remember all your dreams when you dream them? Have you ever thought about why you could be dreaming a dream and all of a sudden you're in another dream doing something and you thought you was over there doing that? Because the average person a night dreams hundreds of dreams. But your mind focuses on certain dreams that are, how should I say this, uh, beneficial to what's going on in your subconscious and in your body. Because there are stages of sleep you have to get to. Because if you don't, you will never, ever be restful when you wake up. There are some things in your body going on when you're in those different stages. The reason why you get in some of them deep stages is because your body's healing and revert, replenishing itself. That's why rest is so important. And one of the other reasons why rest is so important, watch this. If you pay attention to how you dream, early in the morning, just before you wake up, you in a dream that's more vivid than any of the other dreams. And you wonder why I had to wake up. I was at that. <laughs> because if you really went through those stages and rested, when you get to that stage, that's the last stage that's going to make sure, it's like a computer, like make sure the hard drive is put back together. And when you, when you stay up all night and do all this stuff and run here and run there, and you don't never hardly get no rest, you are depriving your body. And then your brain is not replenishing the neurons so you can stay at an optimum level. And that might be a reason why some things come easier to some folks and some things folks never get. I don't know. I'm just saying. And then we need to develop coping skills. Coping involves with adjusting to unusual demands on stressors. Finding a variety of healthy coping methods like meditation or journaling may make managing stressful situations easier and reduce stress effects on your mental health. Now let me say something real quick. I think we need, I think we need to really stop being so quick to criticize other ways people deal with stress. Just because you haven't found a platform that will help you deal with stress, don't try to act like somebody crazy because they keep a journal. Could I ask you a question? What's the difference between talking to yourself answering yourself and believing everything yourself is saying than a person writing in a journal, writing down what happened today, writing down what they think they should fix and how they think tomorrow might be better for them. There's a big difference. The big difference is the person that do journaling is looking forward to changing what happened today. And if you never have those kind of exercises and all you do is talk to yourself, all you do is stockpile the wrong information all the time. And so when it's time to make decisions, you can't make a good decision. There's a difference. 
So we have to learn to find ways to help us deal with stressors in our life. Because some people process differently. Some people try process differently. Some people play videos. When I say videos, I mean videotaping themselves and having a conversation and go back and look at them to see really what they said and what they missed. There's nothing wrong with that. You know why there's nothing wrong with that? Because there's oftentimes you've had conversation with yourself, you forgot about it yourself. Until something trigger it, you say, oh, yeah. You know what I was thinking about that the other day? <laughs> what am I saying? All I'm saying is the human mind. The human mind is really something. And what we have to learn to do, we have to learn to, here's a word y'all don't like, channel. We have to learn how to channel certain pallets of information in the right way, not because we want to know stuff, but to help us. Yeah. It's, go it's good to understand the psyche of other stuff because then that helps you not, especially if you don't like it, that helps you not become what you don't like. Right? But you never can get to that point if you're too angry to even deal with it. There's just some things in our life we just haven't dealt with and we don't want to deal with it. And what we do is we just, that's our excuse for getting mad, getting angry about stuff. But we don't have to do that. These are stressors that we can deal with. So, so what I want us to start doing is I think we need to really, really just take an honest approach to how we process information. I was telling my wife something this morning, this writer, this lady, profound, I was watching some of her documentaries, and this, this is going to blow your mind because it's really going to really almost make you wonder, what in the world have I been doing? She says this, we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. Just let that the amens may not come right now. You may not understand that right now, but just think about that. That almost, that almost have to make you go back and check your reality. Because if we only see things as we are rather than what they are, then that says a whole lot about our filters. And that's what I'm talking about. When you deal with your mental health, you got to check your filters. Because a whole lot of stuff is really not what you see. It's really <laughs> the way you are and the way you think. So, just something to think about. Alzheimer's awareness. Wow. This one here, it amazes me so much because it just doesn't seem like we're getting close to the end here. And let me say something about this real quick before I read my statistics. I remember as a little boy growing up, especially before I got to my teenage years, every now and then you run across somebody with the symptoms what they're talking about here. And people when I was growing up were notorious about hiding things. They didn't deal with stuff good. And there were people who I knew probably had dementia and Alzheimer's, but families, you know how they dealt with it? This, this is sad to say. They used to put them in a room and just leave them there, and everybody be in the kitchen eating, and, and, and ain't so-and-so was always... Now, it, it don't sound good, but I'm just telling you facts. What would have happened as just a community of people had we dealt with that head on and seen something was wrong? 
and, and, and try to understand it and then get ahead of this. We probably wouldn't be one of the only communities suffering like we suffer. It's just something to think about. It's just something to think about. And, and people know when they're starting to slip, and you know when they're slipping. You want, me to, you want me to tell you what the first thing you say? You know what? I, mean, you know, I was talking to Bobo the other day, and they, didn't, they already done told me that about four times. And it just seemed like to me, for some reason, you know, and then we laugh and say, yeah, I told them they repeating themselves. But I think we need to get a little further than that. Uh, that's just my opinion. I think we need to recognize stuff and start helping people and really start seeing there's probably the start of something. And I'm going to be honest with you now, it has a lot to do with what they call a plaque buildup in our brain. And the reason why that plaque is there, we, it's our diet and our sedentary lifestyle. Sedentary means not moving. It means just sitting there. Okay? So sitting there playing video games, eating your favorite food is not a good thing. Now, if you leave your video games and you played your video games three hours, then that means you got to go somewhere and exercise at least four or five to turn that around. Because if you don't, you still, just, just, just say you did 30 minutes, then you still got four hours and a half of sedentary time that you didn't do nothing with. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia, accounting for 60 to 80% of all cases. This irreversible, this irreversible progressive brain disorder substantially burdens the black community. As African Americans are twice as likely to have Alzheimer's or another dementia. 60 to 80% Sixty to eighty percent. Now you talking about a miracle? We need a miracle when this happens, because we've let our brains and our bodies be so sedentary in some aspects until you can't reverse it. But when we cooperate with God, pushing blood through our veins, getting plaque off the arteries. Lighten up your brain, doing brain activities and, and, and doing exercise, keeping the blood flowing through your brains 30, 40 minutes and an hour. That helps that brain stay healthy and alive. So that's why I said, if you're not running, at least walk. It's scientific proof that people, when they walk, they've done neurological studies. Their brain lit up and stayed lit up even after they stopped walking. I know y'all don't like that one. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So what is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's is a type of disease of the brain caused by damage to nerve cells in the brain. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. Symptoms include apathy and depression. I've never seen so many younger people depressed about everything. Depressed about a lot. How do you know that's not the start? When I was growing up, we didn't hear about depression that much. We was always gone somewhere. Always doing something. Inventing our own little scooters. And I made a skateboard before them folks made them. Match guns, so y'all don't even know nothing about that. Needle guns. We made all that stuff. We was outside, they had to make us come in when it when they got dark. <laughs> come on, somebody. Come on. We were active. And we didn't realize that was helping us. 
Do you not know, do you not know that when you go take your physical, and I hope you do, when they take your blood pressure, they can tell whether you walk, sit, or run by your numbers. Every time I go, I just took my physical a couple of weeks ago. Well, I said, you still running, huh? I said, yeah. Yeah, your blood pressure is X, Y, Z. Oh, okay, is that what that means? Yeah, okay. It's something to this, y'all. It strengthens your heart. More blood will flow through. My doctor told me, I told y'all about the physical I took, and he put them little apparatuses on my toe and then put one over here. And I said, hey, we're always going to do the blood flow. He said, no, nah, we don't have to do that, Wes. I already know what your blood flow is. We don't have to measure that no more. You cannot optimize your health and your blood's not flowing through your body like it should. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. The more active you are, the more blood you have pumping through you, the better health you're going to have. Because blood flows through your brain. And that will keep your neurons working and optimizing. Could I give y'all a little biology history real quick? I'm almost done. Let me give you biology history. This is kind of bad, but it'll help you. You know the reason why most people, when they get high and smoke weed, you know why they are high? That chemical in weed eats up your brain cells. And when it eats up your brain, so that's why you. And because your brain is the fastest, the fastest cell development in your body. When you start coming down, that means your brain cells, has, uh, the ones you kill, has almost reproduced already. That's a bad example, but that's, that's a biological fact. That's why it's important to keep your brain engaged because it will keep developing brain cells. See, people that get high for a certain amount of time, you start to notice their brain cells don't develop as fast as they used to. Now, it sounds funny, but I'm being honest. That's what getting high will do. And that's why it's important for you to stimulate your brain and let the blood run through it because it keeps it optimized and it keeps your, your neurons growing and connecting. So when people say I'm coming off my high or I'm coming down, that means their brain cells is producing and they're starting to get back to normal. I see a while ago, you killed a whole bunch of brain cells. That's why you're sitting around tripping. <laughs> see, y'all didn't know I know all that, huh? <laughs> just look at the neighbor and say, he, was, he, he lived in the 70s. Just tell, just, tell, that's all. just tell him I lived in the 70s, that's all. Oh, yeah. Alzheimer's also has a sign of confusion. Difficulty remembering conversations. Names or events. Disorientation. Impaired speech and poor judgment. Now, with that one, that means a lot of folks on TV may have dementia. <laughs> if there's a whole bunch of folks go to court, they don't remember nothing. <laughs> and some of the stuff they're doing is the poorest judgment you ever have seen. And they'll even tell you, well, I think that was just a lapse in judgment. So we need to know the facts. There are three stages of Alzheimer's disease, mild, moderate, and severe. 
Well, listen to this, y'all. This is scary. Currently, 7 million Americans aged 65 or older are affected by Alzheimer's disease. You know, we want to live to get old, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a good mind. I believe there are things we can do now. I just, I just really believe that. Of almost 7 million people, two-thirds, y'all, two-thirds, that's almost the whole group, are women. According to the Alzheimer's Association. I'm going to tell you why I think it is. Because I think women, because they multitask so much, I think they're more stressed than a lot of other people, and they don't deal with the stress. That's just my opinion. I didn't say it was scientific. But did you not know if you don't deal with stressors? Yeah. They'll come back in different forms. Yeah. It'll come back in your physical health. It'll come back in your mental health. Yeah. And, 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 and God bless the women because they're caregivers. They're nurturers. They are people that always want things to be right for the family. And oftentimes, they don't even have space to take care of themselves. Now, I know my wife think I'm crazy sometimes. But I'll be doing certain things on purpose. What you doing today? Oh, okay. You said you're going by your mother's? What time do you think you'll be back? Why don't you just take your time? Don't come back so fast. I'll be all right. I think I need to get back. No, spend a couple of hours with you. You know, sometimes we need to get out that environment and do something else for a couple of hours. You can't be under the gun all the time. You can't. Brothers, brothers, I know you don't see it now, but give your wife the space to sometimes not do what they do. Okay, I didn't get no amens on that. I didn't get no amen. Brothers, your wife don't have to wait on you hand and foot all the time. Get yourself up. Are you hungry? You just get some Fruit Loops till, till you can. My wife will tell you, I done told her. She haven't washed, she haven't cleaned floors since we've been married. If she do, she do it because she want to. I don't sit back and she do it because she have to. There's a difference. Sometimes she tell me, you know, I'm just so tired today. I said, don't cook, don't worry about it. Well, what you going to do? I said, Gwen, if I have to go scrape some ice in there or something, I'll get something. I'll do something. You don't have to worry about that. I'm, I'm serious now. It sounds funny, but I'm serious as I can be. If two-thirds of our women are suffering mentally like that, shouldn't somebody be ready to ease some of that pressure? And they're talking about black women. Black women. There's a thing right now me and my wife do, and, and we've been doing it now for a couple of years. I tell her on Thursday, don't cook. Now, when I come off my fast on Tuesdays, she generally knows I want some soup, so she'll make me some soup. Wednesday, I'm going to eat soup again. When Thursday come, I ask her, pick where you want to go. And I let her, we go to dinner. Fridays, she's probably going to cook something for me. Saturdays, we may be on our own. <laughs> we may be on our own on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. In other words, we would, whatever we catch, that's what we're eating today. Yeah. Oh. Now, it sounds funny. 
But I'm saying this because, y'all, we need to make some adjustments. We need to make some adjustments. And, and uh, you know, when I was growing up, my mother was so industrious. You know what she used to do? She assigned to Wayne, Ronald, and I days we cooked and days we cooked breakfast. Because she worked at night. And she said, you know what? I'm not working all night and coming in here and cooking no breakfast. Come here and let me show you. Wayne sitting right there. We was making grits, oatmeal, pancakes, whatever we wanted. Y'all, sometimes we're our worst enemy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because I'm going to be honest with you now, if you love somebody, you're going to help them. Love goes, lo you know, I found love on a two-way street. Any of y'all want to walk back with me? I found love on a two-way street, but I lost it on a lonely highway. See, when I was traveling by myself, I lost it. Y'all didn't get it. But as long as I was on a two-way street, I found love. All right, all right, all right, all right. Come on. Sometimes we just need to get off the highway and get on the street. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, are you on the street or are you on the highway? All right, all right. All right, I'm about done. Family caregivers provide upwards of $300 billion annually. Listen to this, though. In unpaid care to loved ones living with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. They're saying, y'all, in our black community especially, if the people who care for people with these problems were getting paid, they'd make over $300 billion a year. So if they're not getting paid, they're paying with their health. I tell my wife this, and I told my brothers this. My mother was fine until my aunt got sick. And when my mother went to California and took care of my aunt, and she finally died, my mother came back home. She wasn't the same. She wasn't the same. Because she had to take care of herself and her sister, and they both were old. So what they're saying is, we have loved ones who care for these type of situations all the time. If they, look, if that was just a business they had, saying, I'm going to have a caregiver business and hire all these folks, and this is what I'm trying, they'd make $300 billion a year. Think about that. More seniors die from Alzheimer's disease or other forms of dementia than breast cancer or prostate cancer combined together. Breast cancer and prostate cancer is terrible. And that's all you hear about. But there are more people dying from dementia and Alzheimer's than both of those diseases put together every year. If you or your loved ones are 65 years of age or older and have noticed a behavior change, please speak with your local doctor about availability to cognitive screens. We could take tests right now and they could tell whether your mind is slipping. I'm going to be honest with you now. And I want y'all to hear me real good. That ain't a sign to make fun. 
But if you love that person, that's a sign to try to find ways to help the person. You know what just came to my mind? You know what just came to my mind? Perhaps the reason why most people who know they're slipping don't tell people and won't let nobody help them because they know y'all going to make fun of them. See, when you love people, you don't expose them and let the bad take over. What did Mother Garlic, what did Mother Garlic tell us? What did Mother Garlic tell us? She came to church one time, and she said she loved the preacher so much. She said, at any cost, thank you. She said, because I love preachers, said, without the preacher, we can't get to God. Without the preacher, we're not going to know what God's thinking. Without the preacher, she said, we're not going to get what we need. She said, if I was walking down the street and saw a preacher in the ditch naked, she said, I'll take off everything I have and everything I can find and cover that preacher up till everybody passed by. And when it was safe, I'll get him out the ditch. When you love somebody, you're going to cover them. And you're going to help them. You're not going to go talk about them and make phone calls because you just found out. And I believe that's probably why some folks don't let us help them. Because they don't trust you. Why should I let you know I'm stuck on three plus three when I know you're going to go tell everybody? You'll probably put it on Facebook and I'll look at it. It sounds funny, doesn't it? But that's the kind of mentality we got. We see, see, that's a mental problem when you can't de- you when you can't decipher when it's serious and when to play. That's a problem. The Bible said, "In malice be children, but in business be men." When it's time for business, you got to straighten up. You got to take care of business. Saints, that's my Health Sunday message for today. I want to just, I want to just share with you, I want to share with you, and, and I mean this with everything in me, starting tomorrow, you need to get you a walking regimen. I'm serious. If you're not doing no kind of physical exercise, if you don't do nothing, wait till the sun go down and at least walk for 30 minutes or early in the morning. I'm not telling you to walk till you pass out. Just walk and keep walking and keep walking and light up that brain and get that blood flowing because you don't want plaque on your arteries. You don't want stuff collecting in your brain. I'm telling you, the more you move this, 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 this energy around, the healthier you're going to be. How many of y'all remember the slides I bought and showed you a brain that was exercising and a brain that wasn't exercising? Y'all, did y'all remember seeing the blood flow and the heated part and all that? That's for real. That's for real. Let's not be so cute, so handsome, so fine until we think sweating is a sin. Do you not know sweating is good for you? Sweat is good for you. My wife will tell you the warmer it is when I exercise the better off for me because then I know I'm not going to tear up nothing trying to exercise. I won't be stiff. Your muscles will optimize. I used to ride my bike in the heat down the PC, run and ride it back. 
And then when I come home, just take off my shoes and sit in the pool and cool off. It's not going to hurt you to sweat. It's going to help you. Do you not know sweating is the way God designed not only to cool your body down, but to get rid of impurities. That's why he put pores in your skin, so that stuff could come out. Now listen, we're not thinking. Why do you, why do you think... Why do you think when you're around folks who move a little bit, you could tell they've been drinking or smoking? Because the stuff is coming out. That smoke ain't staying the lungs and you running. It's got to come out. That alcohol can't stay in your system and you running. You, it's, when you sweating, everybody in the gym gonna know you've been drinking. See, those are just simple things we don't pay attention to. Our bodies are designed to get rid of the stuff, but you got to let it get rid of it. Amen? All right.